Welcome back. Great to have you with us on Primetime Business News. Bitcoins and blockchains have been buzzwords in the tech world for a while. And today, the Straight African Blockchain Summit was held in Johannesburg. So a brief introduction, if you're uninitiated, Bitcoin is a digital currency or cryptocurrency because encryption is used to control supply and transactions. Blockchain is the technology that underpins the currency. It basically makes it possible to create a digital ledger or a record of transactions and share this across not only one but a network of computers. Several of these computers are needed to verify any new transactions using algorithms, their own records. That means it's safe because no central uh, authority or computer can alter or delete transactions. No middleman is required. Blockchain is also now emerging as a way to let companies make and verify transactions without any central authority. So let's discuss uh, this kind of complicated but very interesting topic. Uh, we're joined by Tanya Knowles, Executive Director at Fractal Solutions at Straight. Great to have you with us, Tanya. Thank you, Francis. So what did you think of that introduction? How, how do you explain blockchain uh, to, to people? Who well, are... first of all, you've done a very good job in, in explaining <laughs> it. So that's, that's a good start. Um, perhaps to add to what you've said. So it is, yes, the technology that underpins the cryptocurrency, mm. Bitcoin, and that's what it's most well known for. But Bitcoin has a good and bad reputation. It depends on who you speak to. And people are looking at this technology to say, what else could we use it for? And as you've touched on, the whole thing is at the moment we rely on a central database to move assets amongst us. So in the past, if you wanted to communicate with somebody else, you would use something like a post office or an internal memo system or something mm -hmm. to transfer information between ourselves. And then the internet came along and we were able to transfer information far more quickly and effectively and cheaper and all those things. And what blockchain does is it's saying we can do the exact same thing, but to transfer assets between people. And instead of relying on the central party to move that for us, the technology would do it for us in a very trusted environment. So it really has the ability to transform the way society works. Because I think many people don't realize that we rely on trusted parties all the time to move assets around. It could be money via a bank or a deeds office for your house or anything like that. And now there's a new way of thinking to say, do we need these parties in the chain? Can we not do it in a more efficient way, a faster way, a cheaper way, mm. using the internet and blockchain instead? So banks themselves are looking at this, but are they very threatened by it? Could you... Would this be a way to bypass banks and why would companies need to do that? Okay, so I think when, the, when it started a few years ago, everybody said, you know, in five years time, there's going to be no more banks and we're just going to be, I'm going to be able to send you money on the internet and you'll be able to, we'll be able to transact like that. But what's happened is that as people understand the role that a trusted party plays and they don't necessarily trust the technology yet, I don't think we're going to see any significant disruption in the next few years. And also somebody has to verify how did the money get into the system first? Are you the one who really owns that house to start with? And this is where there's still a role for these parties to play. But the key thing that's happening is that the role that they play will probably change. And it won't be in the exact same environment that we're operating in today. It's, it's interesting that the Reserve Bank warned a few years ago about digital currencies, about mm -hmm. Bitcoin, because, uh, like you say, there's a, a two-pronged reputation because they have been used for fraud, uh, for uh, dodgy transactions. Mm -hmm. um, uh, nobody can tax some of those transactions, so it's, so it's a threat to governments. But the Reserve Bank now itself looking how to harness blockchain. Just explain a bit more uh, the types of companies, why they would look at this technology. So what happens is you've got a shared database. So at the moment, every single bank has got their own database. The Reserve Bank has one, a company like Straight, which is keeping a database of shares. We have our own database. And what happens in a blockchain environment is that we are actually working off a single shared database that everybody in, is, has visibility of. Mm. So there's no need for us to be reconciling the information between ourselves. Perhaps something that people can relate to is that I'm sure we've all been fecured so many times and you've handed in your ID documents and your proof of address and I all those sort of things, yeah. yes. But imagine there was one single FICA database that we could all add our information onto. Every party that needed access to that would have access to it and we wouldn't have to be replicating that information across various systems and companies and things like that. 
So there's a, a real ability for, if people collaborate, to be using this technology to move assets, share information, and it's far, and it's got a lot of security in that behind it. This, this is so interesting because uh, could it have applications? Another thing uh, that people worry about is finding criminals, and they may have given their fingerprint at one station, but not everything is connected. So could this actually help us as a country? Absolutely. And, you know, the, the best part about blockchain is you're able to, trans, to trace the transactions from the very, very beginning. So even in the Bitcoin blockchain, they say that the very, very first transaction that was ever put in, and there's been millions since, you can still see a, a chain from that. They call it the Genesis block. And there's transparency to be able to view every transaction that's been through the system, where it came from, how it originated. And you can't go back into the system and delete something or change something. So when you've got a central database um, and you're relying on a central party, there's always that concern that somebody could go into the back end and tamper with those records. But in a blockchain environment, you have to reach consensus across all the computers in the network to make any changes. Mm -hmm. And unless everybody agrees, the change doesn't go in. So you can't go and manipulate the information that's sitting in there. So there's huge opportunities, particularly in emerging economies, the third world, to get rid of a lot of corruption, fraud, things like that by using this technology. In, in South Africa, are companies still generally just talking about this? Uh, is there any interesting practical application you can tell me about? Sure. So, you know, we mustn't be hard on South Africa. I think around the world, you know, there's very few companies that actually have a production ready blockchain that's operating. Um, there's a lot of press releases saying that people are doing all sorts of weird and wonderful, wonderful things. But there's very, very few companies that are actually doing something. So the technology is still in its infancy. People have concerns around perhaps testing the security. Um, you'll see there's always a story or two about Bitcoin being hacked, but it's not necessarily the technology. It's people's individual accounts that are hacked but there's a lot of homework that we need to do before we we take it into a high-risk environment you know for example in financial services we can't go and take our fun complete financial services industry and put it on a blockchain we need to start looking at things that are lower risk areas mm. you know something like um, straight for example is looking at a voting solution so we're saying if somebody goes to an annual general meeting perhaps they can use the system to vote and we can record who voted in what way, there'd be transparency for that. So, um, so it's, it's a time of taking proof of concepts and people are slowly starting to put them into production, but we're not quite there. All right, and, and I do know there are companies, takealot.com, I think you can go and use Bitcoin. So I guess you, you're being exposed slowly but surely to, to the currency and the underlying technology and, and things like that. Absolutely. So there's, there's more than 150 retailers around the world who accept Bitcoin as a form of payment. So people are getting used to using this different form of currency as opposed to rands or dollars or things like that. All right. Thank you so much. This was fascinating. Uh, Tanya Knowles from Straight for us talking about blockchains.